I spoke earlier with CEO Ivan Menezes and began by asking him about the business in the United States and what's happening here. The U.S., actually, the consumer offtake is robust. So what we're seeing in the U.S. market is through COVID, growth rates had accelerated. You know, our U.S. spirits business is 45 percent bigger than it was pre-COVID. And when you look at consumer offtake trends, the market has come back to about mid-single digit growth, which is what we've always expected. And we're holding share. So what you're seeing in our reported sales results is a bit of the supply chain discontinuities from last year, restocking from last year, and uh, uh, replenishing stock into distributors. So underlying health with the consumer strong, uh, the top end premiumization strong, mm -hmm. and I remain confident about the U.S. consumer and the spirits market fundamentals. So it's not, it sounds like you're saying it's not necessarily consumer recession behavior. We're trying to figure out a lot of mixed messages here on the U.S. economy. Yeah, so the way I, if you look at consumer behavior, and uh, even if you look at the retail sales through November, December in the U.S., I think what you have at work is the consumer is savvy, very smart in terms of how they shop and what they want. So if you looked at November, December, uh, retail sales in the U.S., grocery and beverages did well. They were yeah. uh, 6, 7, 8 percent growth. Things like electronics and furniture declined. Uh, apparel was weak. And so what you have with the consumer is they're making very deliberate choices, places they want to mm -hmm. spend and where they want to cut back. And we fortunately belong in a category because people long for socializing and celebrating. The on-trade restaurants and bars are very strong and uh, doing really well in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so our sector and our category uh, belongs in the bucket of people wanting to spend to make those moments count and to make them more special. And that's why we see premiumization strong. I mean, single malts, for example, were up. 60% in these numbers in the U.S. Uh, brands like Lagavulin had a terrific time. Bullet Bourbon was strong. Tequila continues to grow off a very big base now. Uh, we grew 28% on tequila with Casamigos and Don Julio. So I'm, uh, the two trends that persist through this mm -hmm. period is uh, uh, consumers prefer spirits to wine and beer, and they're drinking better. And so premiumization has held up. What's happening with pricing? Are, the co are your costs coming down, and are you able to moderate those higher prices for the consumer? Well, we're fortunate in that we have multiple levers to deal with inflation. Inflation is, is real. It's high. Uh, we had high single-digit cost of goods inflation. Uh, but we, we use a combination of productivity inside the company, which we continue to step up. Uh, the fact that we s uh, are selling more premium products where we make better margins. You know, Johnny Walker Blue Label doing very well gives us higher margins. Uh, half our liquids are aged. So the whiskey that goes into a bottle of Lagavulin or Bl Johnny Walker Black Label was, late, was distilled 12 years ago. It, and and then we look at price. So we are taking price, but we have more levers to offset that. And that's why I'm pleased in these numbers where we grew sales 9%. We were able to expand margins. We grew profits 10%.